After one year has passed, since NASA launched the latest telescope on December 25, 2021, week after week, reports of yet another of its groundbreaking discoveries dominate the headlines. In this video, I will cover the most significant scientific breakthroughs made by Webb in the previous 12 months. In 2021, on Christmas Day, NASA successfully launched the Webb Space Telescope, marking the ends of a decades-long effort by scientists and engineers at the Space Agency. There was no room for mistakes during the launch, and it went off without a hitch. The same can be said during the subsequent months of the telescope's deployment. Midway through the month of July, the first images from the Webb Telescope were made public. The infrared telescope enabled us to peer into the past by providing a clearer view of the whole cosmos, from the nearest stars to the furthest galaxies. Number 1. Webb's Journey to the Early Universe The formation of the earliest galaxies is a major focus of the JWST's scientific mission. This is possible due to the fact that the light travels across space for billions of years. When the Webb observes this light, it is basically viewing the objects as they appeared billions of years ago. On July 11, 2022, U.S. President Joe Biden made the announcement from the White House that the United States had acquired a deep field image. SMAX 0723 itself is 4.6 billion light years away. The powerful gravitational field it produces works as a magnifying glass, revealing farther away galaxies behind it. In one example, light from a faraway galaxy was estimated to have traveled through space for 13.1 billion years before being caught by the telescope. In mid-December, another image from Webb confirmed that the foremost distant galaxies known had been spotted. When Webb looked at the galaxies, the universe was just 350 million years old, or roughly 2% of its present age, or 13.4 billion years ago. Scientists established their ages as part of the JWST, Advanced Deep Extragalactic Survey, or JADES, using data from the telescope's near-infrared spectrograph to determine the speeds at which the galaxies were receding from Earth. A redshift of 13.2 was observed for these objects, which is the greatest value ever seen, surpassing the previous observational high of 13.1. Astronomers can compare the JWST's observations directly with the visible light images of closer galaxies from Hubble and other observatories. This will reveal the way galaxies evolve through cosmic time, growing larger and building up into the shapes we see today. You may find the links in the description to more numerous discussions of each of these topics of interest. Number 2. Webb's Journey in Alien Worlds Looking for planets around other stars was a key reason for developing the JWST. Preliminary observations show this capability. Although JWST can observe planets via the transit technique, where the exoplanet passes in front of its host star and blocks out some of its light, it also has detected light directly from the exoplanet. The first exoplanet JWST directly imaged was a Jupiter-class planet orbiting a star called HIP 65426. According to preliminary research, JWST is performing much better than anticipated from its design specs, which will enable for much more precise and sensitive observations of exoplanets than was previously thought possible. Two more Jupiter-sized exoplanets have been discovered to contain water and carbon dioxide in their atmospheres, thanks to transit observations by JWST. The JWST's capacity to spectrally analyze the light it receives is the most important contribution to the study of exoplanets. Spectra are measurements of how much light is received at each wavelength. Because various atoms and molecules prefer to interact with different wavelengths of light, spectra may reveal a wealth of scientific information. This results in a unique pattern of dark lines in the spectra, much like fingerprints, which are unique to a particular atom or molecule. When it comes to interacting with other molecules, infrared light is where it's at, making the JWST a crucial tool. As a result, the chemical makeup of an astronomical object may be deduced from its infrared spectrum. With the NIRIS instrument on the JWST, scientists were able to do this for the exoplanet WASP-96b. The resulting graph showed the distribution of infrared light from 0.6 to 2.8 micrometers, and in this particular case, 
James Webb showed that WASP-96b contained water vapor in its atmosphere. We also went into more detail about each of Webb's exoplanet discoveries, which you can find by following the links in the description. Number 3. Galaxies and Black Holes One of the first images published by the JWST was of Stefan's Quintet, a tiny group of galaxies. Four galaxies in this group are so close together that their gravity is causing them to interact with one another. The fifth galaxy in the cluster looks to be close. In reality, it is much closer to us and just happens to lie in the same line of sight. The four galaxies in interaction together provide astronomers with a unique laboratory to investigate the processes of galaxy mergers and interactions. One theory suggests that mergers like this were quite frequent in the early universe, serving as the primary mechanism by which galaxies evolved into the massive star cities we see today. Each galaxy's central region has a supermassive black hole, which is assumed to have grown through a merger. Another remarkable achievement for the James Webb was achieved by the Phantom Galaxy M74. M74 is a spiral galaxy that we observe almost face-on and is 32 million light-years distant. The huge spiral arms that characterize spiral galaxies are a particular point of interest. However, no one has ever had such a clear image. Star-forming spiral arms of the galaxy may now be seen all the way down to the galaxy's core for the first time. Collaborations which combine the JWST's new observations with those from existing observatories to uncover a broader knowledge of the celestial objects being examined will also be a key emphasis, as will the brand new discoveries that everyone hopes the JWST will make. The M74 observations, for instance, are a subset of a much broader project aiming at 19 neighboring star-forming galaxies. Hubble and a number of ground-based observatories have taken pictures of these galaxies. Astronomers will be able to locate star-forming areas, determine the masses and ages of star clusters, and learn more about the physical and chemical makeup of the dust grains that drift across the galaxies thanks to the observations made possible by the JWST. You can learn more about all the galaxies and black holes discovered by Webb by checking the links in the description. Number 4. The Life Cycle of the Stars When it comes to peering into the clouds where new stars are being born, infrared astronomy really shines. This is because atoms, molecules, and dust grains scatter less light at longer wavelengths. As a result, at infrared wavelengths, nearly nothing can obscure the star's nurseries from our vision. The JWST also provided an image from NIRCAM showing the star-forming area of NGC 3324 in the Carina Nebula, which is 7,500 light-years distant. When it was first shown to the public, its large gaseous cliffs inspired the name the Cosmic Cliffs. This was due to its resemblance to a mountain range. In fact, it was only the rim of a massive hollow being worn away by the intense ultraviolet radiation emitted by young stars. Despite the fact that the stars are above the image, their activity has caused a bubble to form in the back. Due to the presence of what seems to be steam flowing off the landscape, erosion can be observed taking place in this shot. The star's light has electrified the surrounding gas, making it hot enough to rise above the denser material. Some of the dust is sticking to it. Around 12 light years can be seen in this image. Scientists, on the other hand, have always thought of the Southern Ring Nebula as rather unremarkable. The nebula was thought to be nothing more than the glowing outer layers of a white dwarf, a sort of dying star, which had been evacuated due to the white dwarf's intense radiation. Scientists also knew that another non-dying star, part of a binary system, was largely obscured beneath the brightly lit gas. But Webb's stunning image of the nebula, released as part of its first images and data, made it clear that it wasn't that simple. We also went through each of Webb's star's life cycle findings, which you can find by checking the links in the description. Number 5. Planetary Systems Planets in our own solar system have been targets. In the first image of Jupiter, published by the NIRCAM sensor, the wavelengths were merged to generate an image where brightness represents altitude in Jupiter's atmosphere. For example, Jupiter's great red spot is a storm system so big that it could swallow the whole planet Earth. It is so high in the atmosphere of Jupiter that it looks very bright at infrared wavelengths. 
The deeper cloud layers and hazes appear much darker by contrast. The auroras show up at the northern and southern poles of the planet in this image too. They are created when the particles trapped in Jupiter's magnetic field are funneled into the giant planet's atmosphere, where they strike atoms and molecules and cause them to fluoresce. The JWST also focused near CAM on distant Neptune, six times further from the Sun than Jupiter. Neptune is not seen in so much detail, but the results are similar. A series of bright patches in the planet's southern hemisphere represent high-altitude methane ice clouds, while a more subtle ring of brightness circling the planet's equator could portray a kind of jet stream, a circulating band of atmosphere that powers Neptune's winds and storms. Another recent observational campaign that the JWST was well placed to assist with was the asteroid deflection test of Dimorphos. On September 26th, NASA's DART spacecraft intentionally crashed headfirst into the small asteroid in order to test our ability to deflect an asteroid should one be found on a collision course with Earth. This image was taken around four hours after the impact and shows the enormous dust cloud that was ejected from the collision. Analyzing the amount of material that was blown into space by DART will allow theoreticians to understand more about the interior composition and structure of Dimorphos and asteroids in general. This knowledge will be crucial when designing a mission to deflect an asteroid for real. In the months after the collision, the JWST has continued to observe Dimorphos in order to gain as much insight as possible. Right now, things are just getting started. What we have witnessed up until this point are more like proofs of concept than actual scientific discoveries. Astronomers who took part in these studies have promised to do more research and publish their results as soon as possible. Hey, I just wanted to say a big thank you for watching and for your ongoing support of NASA Space News. We here on this channel work so hard to provide comprehensive coverage of the news each and every day. And if you like our work, you can show your appreciation by joining the channel or simply by subscribing, liking, commenting, and sharing this video with your friends. Thanks for watching.